is Candid Kaya, and on today's episode, I'm going to be talking with my friend and classmate here, who is just a few short years away from becoming a doctor. Do you think you might want to be a doctor in the future? Well, stay tuned to hear some steps you can take and what you should expect on that journey. Hi, Melina. Thank you so much for coming on today's episode. So can you give the viewers a brief introduction about yourself? Of course, and thanks for having me. Hey everyone, my name is Melina Zuniga. I'm a third year medical school student at Morehouse School of Medicine. I graduated from Spelman College. I'm originally from California. So Melina, tell us a little bit about the first time you discovered you wanted to be a doctor. Okay, so there was multiple times that I realized I wanted to be a doctor. Number one, I always really liked science. Like I was always a little science nerd, so <laughs> I always enjoyed that. Um, I realized that I wasn't the kind of scientist that wants to sit behind a desk and never really see people. I'm really social and I like to hang out with people, so I realized that maybe medicine was a good fit for me. And then I also had family members impacted by a variety of like different health issues that kind of helped direct me into wanting to help people with science. So medicine just kind of fell into my lap, really. Boop, there it is. <laughs> Once you realized you wanted to become a doctor, what type of steps did you take? Okay, so I started taking steps in high school. Um, I took, I did a program at UCLA, I can't remember the name right now, but there's a variety of programs that offer chances for you to explore your interests in high school. And then I went to college, at Spelman College, and did biology and pre-med track. And while I was there, I did a variety of summer programs and research within the medical Yes, so, you know, um, as I stated before, me and Melina are former classmates, so we both went to Spelman. Just a little tea for you all. <laughs> so, let the viewers know a little bit about what to expect during the med school application process. So, the application process can be pretty daunting. Um, I would definitely recommend having someone that you can go to consistently as an advisor once you reach undergrad because they can really guide you and that helps a lot. Um, most medical schools require a health, um, I'm not sure how to say it, a health, a letter from your health careers club. It might not be called health careers club, but your health careers office. And so it's important to get involved with your health careers office pretty early. Mm -hmm. Secondarily, you're going to hear a lot about the MCAT. The MCAT is extremely important, um, sadly. <laughs> but it's very important. It's a standardized test. You have to get used to taking standardized tests because you're going to take them for the rest of your life once you get into medical school and as a doctor. So... The MCAT, what I would recommend is if you can get a program that you do over the summer to pay for an MCAT class, you're winning. That's what I did, and it's amazing because you save a lot of money and you get the books to take home for yourself and study when you're ready. Because I, I took a class for my MCAT the summer before I actually took the MCAT. So I took the preparation class so I could learn the test-taking skills, and then I studied on my own closer to the MCAT. But if you can't do that, I would definitely recommend getting books over a class and just dedicating your time setting aside a schedule, making a schedule and setting aside time to really, really focus on your MCAT studying. It's extremely important. And last thing I would say about the application process is something I wish I had known or had abided by. I probably knew it at the time. But it's very important to get your application out early, early, early. So if it opens September 1st, have everything that you can possibly done already August 10th <laughs> and try to submit it as soon as September rolls around. The earlier, the better. So I take it you sent yours in September 1st. No, mine was late. <laughs> when you were applying for med school, I'm sure you had a lot of options in mind. So around how many applications did you submit? I submitted about 10. Now the medical school application process is a very expensive process, so you want to make sure that you do your research and also be aware that there are financial aid, of, there is financial aid available, it's just kind of tough to qualify. So make sure that you do your research on both topics and just know that you really want to apply to a certain med school before you pay the money to apply somewhere that you don't even want to be. Okay. What are your tips to acing the application? Okay, so number one, do it as early as possible. That's the most important thing. I said it earlier, but do it as early as possible. Number two, if you're a well-rounded individual, show it off. You might not have the strongest grades, but maybe you have all the volunteer hours or whatever it is that makes you special. Show it off. Number three, professionalism. When you show up for your interview, please be professional. Show yourself, show like your personality, but in a professional manner. So you're 60% done with med school, right? I'm done. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> First and foremost, power to you. Thanks, girl. But we <laughs> want to know how that experience has been so far. 
Okay, so the um, first two years are pretty standard across most medical schools. So the first year is basically how the body works. You learn how it works in a normal, healthy human being. And me or Nakaya, what's going on in our bodies. Um, the second year, which is actually the first year, the biggest struggle I would say is um, like the transition into medical school because I never had to study that much in my life. And I think most people who don't take a graduate level, um, pre pre I don't know, the programs that you're talking about, like a post -bac or something, or a master's and something, kind of have a little transition that's kind of rocky in the beginning of the first year. But if you can figure it out and learn how to study, second year will go a little bit smoother. Second year, on the other hand, is about what happens when the body isn't working how it's supposed to. So when you make, when you learn about like the pathology of being sick, basically which was interesting, but you're still in the classroom all day. It just doesn't really feel like you're becoming a doctor. When people call you, you can kind of answer, but you really don't know. But now I feel like when you call me and ask me a question, I can kind of actually give you a legitimate answer. So tell us three things you expected in med school and three things that just took you by surprise. Whew. Med school is a surprising <laughs> all endeavor entirely, but, um, Three things I expected, I would say, I expected it to be hard. I expected to be broke. And I expected um, for it to be lonelier than it actually is. Things that took me by surprise, I'm much broker than I expected to be. Um, <laughs> I study pretty much nonstop, and I never expected to do that. And which was probably naive of me. <laughs> One more thing that caught me completely off guard. Honestly, it's every day I get caught off guard by something. I can't give you one thing. <laughs> you, maybe just the, not spontaneity, but just unplannableness of medical school and that just caught me off guard probably. It's a roller coaster, a good roller coaster, but a roller coaster. So what has been your scariest experience so far in med school? I would say, seeing my first patient die. While the patient wasn't my patient that I had been following for a while, I was on a trauma call and they came in basically coded. Um, it was still pretty shocking and upsetting because it's always upsetting to see something like that. As well as just trauma call in general is pretty shocking because you know things are going on in the world but it's kind of scary to see like you see the car crash and you see the traffic it causes but it's different to see the patients actually come in. So that's a pretty terrifying <laughs> feeling but you get used to it and it's kind of somewhat exhilarating it's not for me though pediatrics so you're in year three of med school correct mm -hmm. so in year three what should people expect i know you're currently going to the hospital every day is that like that across the board so year three of medical school is actually the year that you experience your rotations so they're called clinical rotations three and four your clinical years so your clinical rotations for your third year will be you're going to go through all the major um so it's basically pediatrics, family medicine, internal medicine, surgery, OBGYN, and that's basically standard across the nation. So um, for me right now, I'm on surgery, so yeah, I do go to the hospital every day. Long hours because it's surgery. Um, but like pediatrics, you go to offices and you go to hospitals sometimes, it's like kind of more of a balance. And then family medicine, you're, you know, just in an office, like your family medicine doctor that you probably went to when you were growing up. What? should be expected in those last two years? So finishing up my third year, I still have OBGYN, family medicine, internal medicine left. And then fourth year, I plan on doing, basically you can do electives, and most of the time you can do away electives. So I can go to another medical school and try to kind of show off because I want to go to their residency program. So that's your time <laughs> to shine, you know? Um, I plan on doing all pediatric-based <laughs> medicine my fourth year. And that's what's kind of next. Oh, and studying for step two, CS and CK. I don't know much about those yet because I haven't done them. I often hear, now you have to forgive me because I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but I often hear people say, oh, I want to go here to do my residency. Can you shine some light on what exactly that is and a little more information about it for the viewers? Okay. So I'm also still learning, even though I'm in medical school, but a residency program is basically where you go for your training. So when I graduate from medical school, I'll have an MD behind my name, but I won't be able to practice medicine. Um, you still need some guidance. You know, I'll have the knowledge, but not the clinical skill to really apply it. 
So basically, depending on the program that you want to go into, like surgery versus pediatrics, you have three to five years of um, training where you're under the training of an attending, and they basically help train you. So your first year is your intern year, and by the end, you're the chief resident if you're in surgery. For your, there's normally there, however many people are on the program for surgery, you get chief residents, but that's not true for all other specialties. So they vary. And that's basically what a residency is. And like I said, your fourth year, sometimes you can kind of audition um, by going to an away rotation and just showing them how awesome you are. And I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it does. In the next 10 years, what do you hope to be doing? When do you know that you have reached your peak? Oh, <laughs> I hope to never reach my peak. All this climbing. But um, I want to be either a neonatologist, which is a physician who deals with the babies that are born prematurely or any issue at birth. Once you leave the hospital, you're no longer within the NICU. Like you don't come back to the NICU, which is neonatal intensive care unit, but anything that happened right at birth, I want to help take care of. Or I want to be a pediatric hospitalist, so I would work purely in the hospital and deal with sick kids that come into the hospital and are admitted. And so one of those two places I see myself. I kind of want to do one of, there's a variety of loan repayment programs that kind of help um, pay back your loans, but you have to serve a few years in either a rural or an urban community, and I would like to probably serve in an urban community. So that's something I'm looking forward right. to. Thank you so much, Melina. Hey, thank you for having me. <laughs> for coming on today's episode and sharing your journey into med school. I love me some Kaya, y'all. Yeah, Yay. I love me some future <laughs> doctor over here. So I'm just so glad that she was able to interview with us today. And I hope that she's helped you on your med school journey. If you have any comments for Melina or myself, just comment below and we will make sure we get those answered. Until next time.